Welcome back to my comic book channel. Uh, today's topic is going to be on a genre that uh, not too many comic book channels cover, and that's on the horror genre. Now, The Tower of Shadows first appeared in 1969 and was later changed to the title you're looking at now called Creatures on the Loose. The horror genre, I guess, was the less desired of the comic book genres at that time. And um, the comic books I'm going to talk about today are um, from, I would say, some of the greatest Marvel comic book artists of all time. Okay, Creatures on the Loose artists. The four artists that, in my opinion, were, were probably some of the greatest artists to ever pencil a Marvel comic book, or any comic book for that matter, would be the great Bernie Wrightson, uh, Herb Trimp, Sid Shores, and Reed Crandall. The last 15 cent issue, number 13, lucky number 13. Now, the cover you're seeing for Creatures on the Loose was designed by Jack Kirby, Marie Severin, and Dick Ayers. Now, there's a couple interesting stories in this comic book that I really like. Uh, Where Walks the Werewolf? An experimental surgery creates a werewolf that dies trying to kill his romantic rival. And then, of course, again, another Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers reprint. I was captured by the creature from Krager, which is the cover you're looking at right now. Now, this is basically a story of a dissolute human targeted by an alien that can transport items through television sets. But... He is saved by his failure to pay his electric bill. So just kind of a weird story, but it's one of those stories I would I would definitely sit down and read time and again because I just I love the horror genre. Kind of a combination between uh, Twilight Zone and um, Kojak the Night Stalker. That's kind of how I look at Creatures on the Loose. That's my analogy. So that, that's issue number 13. Let's go to issue number 12. Now issue number 12 was done by the great Sid Shores. Now, many people may not be familiar with Sid Shores, but Sid Shores was one of the original artists in the golden age of Captain America comic books. Now, the cover was done by Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers. First story is called The Master Slave. And basically, this is where Igor uh, from Frankenstein is pushed to the breaking point of the incessant demands of Dr. Frankenstein. And in the ensuing argument, Dr. Fran Frankenstein has a heart attack and dies. Later on, Lonely Igor decides to complete his master's experiment by bringing the monster to life, so he too will have a servant that he can order around. But as you know, in the monster genre, things never really go as quite planned. That was, that was the, the only little tidbit that Sid Shores got to contribute. Now, I was captured by a gorilla. That's what you're looking at here. This cover was another Jack Kirby cover, Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers. Um, interesting story. It was actually, this is my favorite story of the whole comic book. Uh, you get a cab driver that uncovers an alien plotting an invasion on Earth. Obviously, the police won't believe him, but he ends up foiling the invasion on his own and the aliens are ultimately killed by their masters. Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty cool comic book. Um, Creatures on the Loose number 11. The cover should look eerily familiar, at least in terms of the artistic style of the last two that you just looked at on this video. Uh, if you give up, I will give you the answer. Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers again. So uh, they definitely had a hand in drawing a lot of these covers for Creatures on the Loose. And um, this particular issue was done by another legendary artist. Now, not the cover itself, but there, there's actually a story, a story in the comic book called The Underground Gambit. And Herb Trimp, if you've never heard of that name before, is an artist that was the first to draw for the publication of the character Wolverine, who obviously was a breakout star for X-Men. So that story in the comic book was her trip. Uh, he, him 
and another gentleman by the name of Len Wein uh, did the, the actual writing for the comics, but Herb was the artist for the story Underground Gambit. So basically, it's about a, a comic book artist. His name is Roger Crass, who's been drawing underground comics for a living, but he hates his job. But this mysterious man shows up with an offer that will finally recognize his true talent. But, like the Twilight Zone, it turns out to be a catch. So I'm not going to give away the, the ending to the story. Um, now, the next story was The Unbelievable Menace of the Moomba. Now, that's the cover you're looking at here by Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers. And it's basically about this guy, Frank, who discovers a Native African wooden carving that's uh, it's actually an advance to the fifth column invasion force under the command of Moomba. And Keita, K2, I think that was his name, Keita or K2, uses his magic to force Moomba and his wooden statues to leave Earth. So, um, it's another reprint story from, I want to say it was Where Monsters Dwell, number nine. Um, but uh, yeah, another, another uh, Hall of Fame barrage of, of artists were responsible for this issue. Creatures on the Loose, number 10. The Coming of King Cull, The Skull of Silence. Now, this particular comic book is the most valuable for the whole Creatures on the Loose genre. And I'll tell you why. As you may or may not know, looking at the cover, this happens to be the first appearance of King Cull. But that's not the only reason why this comic is worth so much money. Now, although the cover was done by Marie Severson, the artwork inside uh, for the King Cull seven-page storyline was done by the legendary Bernie Wrightson. And this was one of those comic books that really put Bernie on the comic book map, so to speak. And uh, I'm going to go more into a synopsis on, you know, what Bernie was doing back in the 60s and, uh, you know, the whole history of DC Comics and Marvel and, you know, the moonlighting he did between the two comic books and ultimately his uh, claim to fame, which happens to be Swamp Thing. I was featured in... Creatures on the Loose number 10 for the first time in a story called The Skull of Silence. And basically, The Skull of Silence is uh, it's a story about Cull, who is warned not to open the doors to the castle, as doing so will unleash an ancient evil. Cull ignores the warnings, breaks the lock, and opens the door. He's almost overwhelmed by and barely defeats the mystic entity known as the Silence. After trapping the entity back in the castle and relocking the doors, he declares that no one should ever open those doors again. So, just in a nutshell, it's a seven-page story. Uh, well, one other story is called Troll the Unhuman, which is basically, it's about this elephant uh, that uh, defeats this alien. It's uh, the, mental, the mental essence of an alien bent on global conquest takes over a steam shovel and is defeated by an so elephant. So to speak. But uh, anyway, I'm going to stop it here.